this is probably the only safe for work video this week which just goes to show how uh, odd I am. Hi, so apparently this week is rant about gender bias week. And I said, okay, sure, I can do that. And it gives me an excuse to return to last week's subject, which I found I could uh, talk about indefinitely. And I spend a lot of time online hanging out among the geek community, and there's a concept in the geek community called the fake geek girl. It's because a certain a certain segment of the geek population just can't believe that a girl would genuinely be into comics and cons and must just be there to uh, impress guys. I'm not a comic geek and I don't go to cons. I identify as a geek, I just don't happen to be a comic geek. But then I realized that there is an aspect of my geekitude that has the same sort of thing going on. Because apparently if you believe uh, the marketing departments of your average radio station, people who listen to rock music are male. Specifically they are male chauvinistic, probably lower class jocks. I, as a grown woman, should be, according to their marketing departments, listening to the uh, pop station or the adult contemporary station or at the very least the um, We Play Anything stations, like we have Bob FM in our area which I do listen to. That's the station I have on in the kitchen because it has the most variety. But when it plays new music, the only new, new music it seems to play is uh, really annoying, whiny adult contemporary pop. They don't market the rock stations to someone like me, which is kind of strange when they're actually some of the best female DJs in the area are on the rock stations that I've noticed a decade back, this is a long time ago, but but it's still relevant. Um, my favorite classic rock station had a little station identification promo that said, if you steer the car with your knees to get a better grip on your air guitar, you might be a listener of our station. And I loved that. And I said, that is so me. And I was so thrilled that I actually emailed the radio station to tell them that that was an awesome promo and I totally identified it although I'm really more of a steering wheel drummer and when I thought about it I realized that the reason that resonated me was so much was that none of their other promos did all their other promos were like this is not your girlfriend's radio station or <laughs> something like that they were all focused on this this mental image they had of these jock guys hanging out and drinking beer and listening to their station. Um, and rock music has a tendency to have absolutely horrible chauvinistic lyrics. <laughs> Women are always objectified in the songs and there aren't nearly enough female rock stars. I'm not talking pop stars, I'm talking rock stars. You know, like I've seen Led Zeppelin described as penis rock. I'm going to give you a really an inch of my love, huh? Um, and I love Led Zeppelin, and I am not, you know, I have a serious lack of testosterone. I didn't get into rock music for the lyrics, because it's about the music. It's about John Bonham just wailing into those drums. I really should become a drummer. I you know, <laughs> keep coming back to that. I've always really identified with um, the main character of one of my favorite movies, um, Almost Famous, William Miller, which is another interesting little gender thing there. Yeah, I can, one of the fictional characters I most identify with is male, but I don't identify with him because he's male. I identify him with him because he's a really geeky, goody two shoes, rock music fanatic which that's me.
I am so not rock and roll. You're too sweet for rock and roll. Sweet? Where do you get sweet? I am dark and mysterious and pissed off, and I could be very dangerous to all of you. So I know I'm not the marketing person they have in mind when it comes to rock music, but I'm probably more passionate about it than a lot of those jockey drunk guys are. I'm not a groupie. We are not groupies. Act. Groupies sleep with rock stars because they want to be near someone famous. We're here because of the music. We are band-aids. Why can't it be about the music? So that's the thing. If I had been in William's place, I mean, he got mistaken for a groupie. If I had been there back in the 70s or even now, no way they would take me seriously as a journalist. They would have just assumed I was a groupie. You just have to watch that movie. That's one of my favorite movies for a reason. You know, like, you know that movie, it's got a real female rock star as its main music, uh, main music coordinator. My saddest celebrity breakup. If, you know, a person can feel sad about celebrity breakups was Cameron Crowe and Nancy Wilson because I'd always been so tickled that William grew up to marry a rock star and then they they weren't anymore. And that's another interesting thing. Um, when you say the word rock star, it's like the, the gender bias thing. It's like the same one about the do riddle about the airplane wreck and the doctor turns out to be a woman and you're supposed to be confused about that. Um, you say rock star, and you're like, but he married a rock star, he's gay. But he didn't. It's a girl rock star. You expect me to say she's a pop star. She's not a pop star. She's not a pop singer. The person who did this. He's not a rock star. There really needs to be more female rock stars. I would. If I ever just, you know get on myself to learn how to play the drums and then I need to find a band and then I need to actually perform.